Season 2, Episode 1, 737. The season begins with Watso from Toy Story 3 taking a bath in the pool of the White Residence. One of his eyes tragically fell out, but it makes sense once you realize that half his entire body is charred, beginning the big cliffhanger of the entire season. After this, the episode takes place right where we left off, with Tuco beating the shit out of one of his partners. After Walt figures out he'll need $737,000 total to make for his family, get it? Tuco finds him and Jesse to save his partner from dying, but at that point it's too late. Walt and Jesse both realize how unhinged Tuco truly is, showing how he will beat up his closest partners over even the smallest of things, and that they are both now likely under the imminent threat of danger. When I rewatched this next scene, I went, huh, this doesn't look familiar. Alright, Skylar's ready to, for something? Okay, she's putting- oh wait. Oh no. No, 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 Walt, don't do it! No, 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 no! I completely forgot about that scene, but when I rewatched it, it hit me like a truck. Later, Walt and Jesse talk to each other about the situation they're in, and how they're going to attempt to kill Tuco. Walt comes up with a solution to their problems. Beans. Beans. More specifically, ricin, an extremely toxic poison. Meanwhile, Skylar and Marie are on shakier grounds than Russia and America during the Cold War. But before Skylar can go full nuclear, Hank tries to clear things up, which makes things much worse. This scene was great, with Skylar spilling her guts to Hank about everything. Anna Gunn's acting is incredible here. Hank apologizes to Walter later, but during the call, Hank decides to send him some pictures of dead bodies. Oh great, dead bodies. I wonder which ones he'll- <gasps> Oh my god! Gonzo's dead! This alerts Walt and Jesse to go on the defensive, so Walt goes back to his house, presumably to tell Skylar about Tuco. But before he can tell her anything, he sees Jesse pull up to his house, and would you look at that, Jesse brought a friend to play with. I wonder who it is- Oh. Oh dear. Overall, this episode is pretty great, with some great scenes here and there, especially the confrontation in the last few minutes of the episode. This one's getting a beat here from me. Season 2, Episode 2, Grilled. Hank continues the manhunt, with a new main target this time being Tuco. However, he requests personal time, as he needs to focus on Walt's disappearance with Skylar and Walt Jr. Oh, Heisenberg, that little rascal. What's he up to this time? Ouch. Get away from me! Oh. Tuco interrogates Walt and Jesse and finds out about his family, as well as his true identity. Tuco tells them how the DEA shut down his business earlier that morning, and how he believes Gonzo snitched to the police. Tuco pitches Walt and Jesse the brilliant idea of taking the two of them down to Mexico, where they can work with him full time without the worry of the feds, but the two of them reject this offer. Tuco almost takes a hit of their rice and laced meth, but Jesse accidentally convinces him not to take it. And you. Better hope they got room in the trunk. I don't think Tuco likes Jesse. The two concoct a plan to poison Tuco's burrito, but Captain Ding Dong pulls a fast one and manages to rat the both of them out, infuriating Tuco. He starts beating the piss out of Jesse once again, but Jesse finds a rock on the ground as Tuco forces him into the ground, and as Walt distracts Tuco, calling him a degenerate piece of filth, Jesse smashes his face with a rock in one of the most satisfying scenes in the entire show. Jesse manages to get the upper hand by shooting Tuco with his own gun, and the two decide to let Tuco bleed to death. They're about to get away when they notice a car pulling up to the house. Who is it? Well, it's none other than Hank motherfucking Schrader! As he has this amazing shootout with Tuco and ends up taking him down. <laughs> Walt realizes it's Hank and books it out of there along with Jesse. This episode was already pretty great, but the last 10 minutes immediately boost this one up to an S tier. Those last scenes are some of the most underrated in the entire show, and it's absolutely amazing watching Jesse take down Tuco after all that he did to him. Season 2, Episode 3, Bit by a Dead Bee. What the fuck does that mean? Walt and Jesse try to find their way home, while also trying not to get spotted by the DEA. The two hitchhike a ride, and Walt tells Jesse to fuck off while he gets a ride. Walt devises a plan to fake a fugue state, and part of his plan is to... Wait for it... Wait for it... YEAH! LET'S GO! <laughs> Walt is brought to the hospital and paired back up with his family, and Jesse is forced to be on the lookout, as DEA agents are trying to track him down, since his car was found at Tuco's hideout. With the help of Badger and his cousin, he manages to get the meth lab equipment and the RV out of the house. Come to me, beautiful baby. I'm gonna be so good to you. 
I'm not ashamed to admit I've rewound that scene multiple times. Jesse ends up being taken by the DEA and is questioned by Hank and Gomez, who reveal that they found a buttload of cash in the back of Jesse's car. Jesse tells Hank and Gomez that him and Wendy were partying for three days straight, but the two of them aren't buying it. They also interrogate Wendy, which goes slightly off from what Hank expected. Where's my root beer? You wanted me to do that, kid. Where's my root beer? Later, Walt admits to the doctor that he faked his fugue state and lies about what he did during that time for weird reasons. Like, does he not want people to find out that he's cooking and distributing meth? What's up with that? Hank brings in Hector to help interrogate Jesse, but when asked if Jesse was at his house, he tells the DEA to suck a fart out of his ass. Damn, this episode has way more sexy scenes than I remember. Anyways, Jesse is let go and he talks to Walt, who tells him that he wants to start cooking again, because that went well last time, and the time before that. Walt's thinking, Eh, it's fine. Money's not an issue. Besides, I got that box of money lying in that empty box of diapers wide out in the open. OH SHIT! <laughs> Walt busts back home to hide the money, and this is followed by a great scene in the show where he goes back to the hospital, with him noticing his own missing poster and riding the bus home. He also puts back in his own IV needle. <laughs> well, I, I, that, that wasn't in the show. Walt leaves the hospital and has a talk with Hank, who reveals his birthday gift, Tuco's own grills. When Walt leaves the hospital, Skyler confronts him about his second cell phone, a claim that Walt denies. He tries going in for a kiss, but gets rejected! This episode is really good. I think it's pretty underrated. A tier for sure. Season 2, Episode 4. Down. We begin with another vision of Lotto being picked up by a guy in a hazmat suit, who is apparently collecting evidence for something we don't know yet. Among the evidence picked up is... A pair of glasses? Uh-oh! Walt and Jesse meet up at a gas station, and Walt tells him that he'll have to take a break from cooking for now, since Skyler's suspect meter is going up big time. Walt cooks breakfast for the family, presumably to save face, and Walt Jr.'s breakfast counter has officially gone up to approximately five. That's right, I've been keeping count, and don't think I'm stopping there. Walt tells Skyler a lie about why he totally didn't have a second cell phone, but Walt is arguably one of the worst liars in the entire show, and Skyler sees right through it. Meanwhile, Jesse gets kicked out of his house by his parents after they find out about the meth lab in his basement. He tries calling Walt for help, but Walt is too distracted by the fact that Walt Jr. renamed himself the Flynn, and Skyler keeps going out constantly. Luckily, though, Walt shows some restraint when talking to Jesse. Do not call here, ever! <laughs> Jesse ends up falling down a downward spiler. Jesse fu Jesse ends up falling down a downward spiler. Ah, oh, fuck me. Jesse ends up falling down a downward spiral of sorts, as every bad thing ever happens to him all at once. Nobody is able to take him in to stay. Someone stole his bike, but when he tries to spend a night in the RV, he falls into a porta potty. <laughs> Skyler going out constantly is starting to piss Walt off, so he decides to teach Walt Jr. how to drive a bit. This scene is awesome. Break, break, break. I'm breaking! Wait, you're using both feet again! It's not stopping! That, no, that's the gas! Use the brake! The brake! Break, 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 break! Jesse is caught sleeping in the RV by Badger's cousin, and he gets fed up with him pretty quickly, and refuses to make any more deals with him, instead deciding to sell the stuff in the RV. This doesn't last long, though, since Jesse immediately steals it back. Walt tries to make amends with Skylar, but it does not go well. She asks Walt to tell the truth, to which Walt comes up with a 200 IQ response. Then tell me. Tell you what? Oh, that probably won't go over well. Walt notices Jesse parked in the RV in front of their house, and they get into a huge fight over splitting the money 50-50. Eventually, the two of them settle down, and Walt gives Jesse his share. The title of this episode is beyond accurate. Everybody's lives are starting to go nowhere but down. Walt's having marital issues, Walt Jr. is having driving issues, Jesse is having issues, period, and Skyler is having responsibility issues. What the hell, Skyler?! Oh my god! This one's getting a B tier. Not amazing, but not terrible either. Season 2, Episode 5, Breakage. Walt continues his lie to Skylar that Gretchen and Elliot are paying off Walt's cancer treatments, and later when he's puking his guts out, realizes someone tried to flush an entire pack of cigarettes down the toilet. Skylar, you silly goose, that's not where they go! Meanwhile, Hank gets a promotion at his job, but when he tries to take the elevator, he ends up suffering from a PTSD attack. Jesse goes back to the storage and pays for the damages he did in the previous episode, as well as buying himself a new ride and a new apartment with a goth chick. In this new apartment, Jesse discusses plans with Badger, Skinny Pete, and Combo on when and where they're going to be selling the meth. Meanwhile, Walt goes to a family dinner at Hank's place, where Skyler continues to confront Murray and asks her for an apology. Holy shit, they still haven't made up yet? For God's sake, it's been six episodes! Get over it! I'm sorry. Oh, thank God. Later, Jesse and the gang manage to make some fat stacks on the streets until Skinny Pete gets held up by this crackhead couple. <laughs> Cut.
God, every time I hear her laugh, I just want to slap someone. Jesse gives Walt his half of the money, and instead of being thankful that Jesse would go out of his way to recruit his friends and make him a nice profit of money, he confronts Jesse as to why he's short on cash, and Jesse tells him that Skinny Pete got robbed. Walt tells Jesse to assert his dominance. Take it! Here! Walt and Skyler have another passive-aggressive argument, and Walt confronts her about the cigarettes he found in the toilet earlier. Perhaps you might know something about this. Perhaps I don't, Walt. Perhaps I smoke them in a fugue state. Uh... Walt tells Jesse what he wants him to do about the crackhead couple. I want you to handle it. This was a pretty mediocre episode. Not a bad episode by any means, but definitely not one of the show's best. This episode's getting the first C tier on our list. Pretty impressive it took this long, if you ask me. Season 2, Episode 6, Peekaboo. Jesse takes action against the people who stole from Skinny Pete and breaks into their house. But instead of finding the couple, he finds their kid, who responds to none of Jesse's questions, only saying one thing. I'm hungry. Walt goes back to teaching after his leave, and Gretchen calls to check in on Skylar and Walt, and Skylar thanks Gretchen for paying off Walt's cancer treatments. Meanwhile, Jesse feeds the kid, whatever that is, and plays peekaboo with him. God, is this kid stupid or something? Does he not know that Jesse's face is still behind his hands? Dumbass. Anyways, the crackhead couple finally comes back, and Jesse holds them both at gunpoint. Gretchen takes a stop by the White household, and Walt begs her not to reveal the truth to them and asks to talk, to which she immediately drives away. Meanwhile, Jesse continues to interrogate the crackhead couple, and the husband shows Jesse the ATM they stole. They have a bit of trouble opening it, though, and the wife gets mad after her husband calls her a skank. Walt has a talk with Gretchen, and they get into a bit of an argument, with Gretchen asking why Walt is doing this and where he's getting his money from, and Walt denying everything and bringing up their past that was briefly talked about last season. Walt accuses Gretchen of cutting him out of the business, which is something we'll learn about much later in the show. Eventually, it all ends with a fuck you and Gretchen storms out of the restaurant. This scene is a really underrated one in my opinion, and it really starts to introduce Walt's ever-growing pride and ego. He comes off as incredibly unlikable in this scene, which isn't a first, but it definitely feels a lot different. Also, Jesse gets knocked the fuck out by the crackhead couple. <coughs> Walt celebrates a quality day of bridge burning, but is interrupted when Skylar tells him that Gretchen and Elliot will stop covering his treatments. Which is honestly a 500 IQ move from Gretchen. She listened to Walt and is keeping up the lie, but she's added her own twist to the plot. So yeah, Walter's pretty fucked. So now he not only has to come up with a lie for that, but now he has to come up with another excuse for where he's getting the money from. Walt tells Skylar that Gretchen and Elliot are broke, saying that the economy is in the toilet. You know, she could have just told me herself. Well, they're prideful people. Oh, shut the fuck up, you piece of shit. Meanwhile, Jesse is still knocked out, but luckily the crackhead couple didn't kill him, as they're both trying to open up the ATM themselves. Things get heated between the two of them, and the husband calls her a skank one final time before the wife decides she's had enough. Ain't no skank. No, 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 don't, don't, no, no. Jesse finally manages to open up the ATM and take his money. But before he goes, he decides to do the kid a favor. He cleans up his prints, calls 911, and brings the kid outside so the police can bring him into Child Protective Services. This is one of the first real bittersweet scenes in the entire show. This ending was shockingly kind of sweet, despite all the murder stuff. Yeah, this episode is a definite S tier for me. We see a lot more backstory with Walt, we get an amazing subplot with Jesse, and some really amazing scenes. Also, here's the official skank counter. Hey, skank! Skank! Thirty-one. Damn, not bad. Season two, episode seven. Negro e Azul. Man, that last episode was incredibly emotional and character driven. Let's see what this one has to offer. Yeah, this one definitely hits a lot different when you're watching this on a binge. Walt meets up with his son, Jesse. Come on in, Dad. Walt confronts Jesse about his now increasing drug use, and Jesse tells him that it stemmed from his run-in with the crackhead couple. After Jesse tells Walt they're way dead, Walt gets mad at them. I mean, to be fair to Jesse, Walt's the one who gave him the gun. Probably should have expected that, you fucking idiot. We're not quite to the point where Walt has no problem with death and killing people, but he's definitely entered that prideful ego stage a bit. Meanwhile, Hank is settling into his new promotion, but not very well. Hey, please, senor Sente! Hey, no, the ape! 
please, eh? <coughs> Walt does some business with Jesse's friends and find out that word is spreading about Jesse's run-in with the crackhead couple. They asked if Jesse crushed the guy's head with the ATM, and Walt sees this as an opportunity to sweeten Jesse's reputation. Skyler meets up with her old boss, Ted Beneke, and asks him for a job back at the office, while Walt meets up with Jesse to increase their territory. As well as to further spread Jesse's reputation as a tough-as-nails meth dealer, Hank talks with cartel member Tortuga, who gives information to the DEA to crack down on the cartel. Man, this episode is all over the place, isn't it? Walt Jr.'s breakfast count increases to six, and Motorcycle Mikey accidentally reveals Jesse's true name in front of Jane. Hey man, you're pink. You're the man. Everybody's been talking about you. Yeah. And the people Hank is working with are not the biggest Schrader fans. Hank finds an object moving in the middle of the desert, and upon further inspection, finds out it's Tortuga's head riding on top of a tortoise, which disgusts Hank. Hey! Welcome to- <laughs> Jesse confesses to Jane about his real identity, invites Jane to watch TV with him, and things start to blossom in the Pinkman household. This was a solid episode. Lots of stuff happened and progressed in this one. Definitely some highlights in this one as well. This is getting a solid A tier from me. Season 2, Episode 8. Better, Better Call Saul. Saul. Before I review this episode, I got a pretty funny story. So when I was younger, I remembered hearing a Bible story about this guy who went around arresting and belittling people who believed in God. And God got pissed off at him and made him learn his ways by causing him to go blind and go on this big journey to be conversed from a hateful atheist to a full-blown apostle. This man's name was Saul. And by the end of the story, he changed his name to Paul. Why do I tell you this? Well, when I was younger, I heard this story around the same time Better Call Saul was first being aired. And I heard the show's title through radio ads. The thing was though, I didn't realize this was a TV show being advertised. I thought the show's title was a phrase that people used. In this case, I thought to call Saul was to ask help from a person who did bad things. And you know what? I wasn't half wrong. So basically in this episode, Badger falls for a sting operation and gets arrested by the police. And Jesse advises Walt to call Saul Goodman, a shady lawyer who's deep in the crime world. Saul Goodman is one of my favorite characters, even before Better Call Saul. He's such a quippy douchebag, you can't help but love him. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go back a bit. Jesse and Jane play a close game of Battleship, and Jane reveals to Jesse that she's in recovery after Jesse asks if she wants to marry that wanna. Wait. Mar marijuana. Mary. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane? Are you kidding me? Walt goes over to Hank's place after a call from Marie and finds him shell-shocked from the trip to Mexico, and gives him a monologue that'll drive actors auditioning for a role wild to help motivate him. Jesse finds out Badger got arrested, and Hank returns to the DEA office and finds out about Badger's arrest, and he and Gomi decide to give him a visit. Badger is interrogated by the cops, but before he can reveal his supplier, Saul walks into the office and talks to Badger instead. Brandon Mayhew. Ah, oh, here we go. Public masturbation. What? I don't get it. What's the kick? Why don't you do it at home like the rest of us with a big flat screen TV, 50 channels of pay-per-view, in a Starbucks. That's nice. On my first watch, Saul was definitely a funny character, but watching him now, it's just sad after getting all the context. Anyways, Walt meets up with Saul for the first time, and Saul tells him that the DEA is after a man by the name of Heisenberg, since the meth badger was dealing with a signature blue stuff and they're trying to get information that'll lead to Heisenberg's arrest. Saul tells Walt that Badger will give info about Heisenberg so that he'll get a lighter sentence. But Walt makes an offer to Saul to make sure that Badger doesn't give any info to the DEA about him, but gets rejected in the process. Walt and Jesse don't take kindly to this and kidnap Saul and threaten to kill him if he doesn't take the offer. No, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one! Lalo didn't send you? No, Lalo! Who? Oh, thank God! Oh, Christ! It's pretty amazing how this one throwaway line created two of the best characters in Better Call Saul. So Saul ends up making a deal with the two and also strikes a deal with the DEA. Badger gives some info to the DEA about Heisenberg and participates in a sting operation to get Heisenberg arrested. However, Saul concocts a plan with Walt, Jesse, and Badger to have a guy get arrested disguised as Heisenberg. But Badger confuses a completely different guy with the guy Saul had disguised, resulting in this amazing scene with Jesse and Walt trying to stop Badger from dealing to the completely wrong guy and screwing up their entire operation. It's awesome. I remember the first time I watched this episode, I had to literally pause the episode and take a breather because of how excited I was. And after rewatching it for this video, it's still amazing. I wish I could show the entire thing here, but Sony would probably resize my rectum yay big, so you'll have to watch it yourself. After this, Jesse goes home and plays Battleship with Jane again, and Saul meets Walt at his school, offering to help Walt with his meth business. So if you want to make more money and, uh, keep the money that you make, better call Saul! This episode is the best by far in my opinion. It introduces one of my favorite characters in the entire show, and has some pretty amazing scenes. 
S tier without a doubt. Top of the list so far. Season 2, Episode 9. Four days out. Walt goes in for a PET scan and finds out his cancer is starting to spread further. And after a meeting with Saul, finds out that he's going to have very little cash to leave for his family. In case he goes out early, Walt decides to go on a meth cooking binge with Jesse. So Walt tells Skyler that he's going to go cook some meth with Jesse and heads off. Just kidding, he tells Skylar he's gonna visit his mom for a few days, and tells Jesse to cancel his plans with Jane to look at Georgia O'Keeffe vagina pictures. The two go out in the middle of nowhere and start cooking, and after a few days, come up with over a million dollars worth of meth. The two get hyped, but the celebration cuts very short. When the two realize the battery for the RV is dead, they try to jumpstart the RV, but with no luck. Panicking, Jesse puts out the fire and uses the rest of the drinking water that they had on the entire trip. So now Jesse and Walt are stuck in the middle of the desert, with no water, barely any food, and no service, beginning one of the most painful segments in the entire show. I literally cannot watch this part without a bottle of water, it's so painful. Jesse tries to recruit some help from Skinny Pete to pick them up, but he ends up getting lost and Walt's phone dies. Walt and Jesse try to manually generate energy to the car's battery, and it ends up working for about two seconds. Walt thinks it's all over and Jesse tells him to snap out of it and come up with something scientific, and Walt has a brain blast moment. He compiles a bunch of metal together to create a battery for the RV, and Jesse has a brain blast moment at the same time Walt does. What shall we use to conduct this beautiful current with, hmm? Hmm? Uh, wire. Yeah, uh, copper. This plane actually manages to work, and hearing the car finally start has got to be one of the single most satisfying sounds in the entire show. Besides, of course... Uh, liar. So the whole thing ended up being a nice little bonding experience. A nice, cute, really fucked up bonding experience. But when Walt meets with his doctor to hear the results, he finds out that his cancer is actually in remission, not growing like he thought it was. Oops! It also turns out that his incessant coughing and hacking the entire episode was also just a side effect in his treatment. But hey, at least he has a million bucks worth of meth to sell, so things should be looking up in the world of Walter White. <laughs> right? This episode is really solid, it's definitely the most painful to sit through, but in this case that's a plus. Solid 8's here for sure. Season 2, Episode 10. Over. We get another teaser involving Lotso, where dead bodies are revealed to be on the scene. Walt Jr.'s breakfast count increases to 7, while Skyler tells Walt not to go into work, telling Walt to relax. Walt decides to take a nap in bed, and just kidding, he meets up with Jesse to tell him some big news. He tells Jesse about his remission, but also tells him that he'll be retiring from the meth game for good. Later, Walt gives a brief but incredibly depressing speech at a celebration party, and gets progressively more drunk and even more angry. While sitting with Hank and Walt Jr., he gives Jr. a bit of whiskey, creating a wholesome-ish family experience. But then he gives him another. And another. And when Hank tries to stop Walt... Bring the bottle back. Sorry, buddy. No can do. My son. My bottle. My house. Walt and Hank have this tense face-off, and Walt Jr. predictably pukes right into the pool. I remember re-watching this episode and thinking, hey, Walt's actually not being as much of a dick as usual. And then this scene played. Jesse plays some kissy-kissy with Jane while making some breakfast for her. And Walt calls Skylar, apologizing for his previous puke-in-the-pool outburst. But to no avail, as Skylar gets distracted by future plot point Ted Beneke. Walt also notices that nasty-ass sewer water is leaking out the sink, and takes it as a perfect opportunity to make amends with Skylar by fixing it. That's what I like to hear. Ha! <laughs> Symbolism. Walt later apologizes to Walt Jr. over the incident, and Jesse and Jane smoke some fat ciggies while looking at drawings Jesse made in his childhood, until Jane unexpectedly leaves the house with her dad, and she acts like she doesn't know who Jesse is in front of him. The two of them argue briefly about this, with Jane dropping a fat fucking diss. Us! Alright, I'm talking about us. Us. Yeah. You and me. Who's you and me? Oh! Jesse leaves the house after getting absolutely roasted. Skylar vocalizes her frustrations to Ted about her marriage without telling him explicitly, creating a bit of a bonding experience between the two and planting plenty of seeds for future episodes. <laughs> planting seeds. <laughs> oh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Anyways, Walt Jr.'s breakfast count goes up to eight, while Walt keeps working on getting rid of mold growing in the crawl space. It's funny watching Walt progressively get more and more desperate to save the sinking ship that is his marriage. As Jesse gets wacky with his cracky, he gets a letter from Jane, which is revealed to be an apology drawing. The two eventually make up and everything is hunky-dory again, and nothing bad ever happens between the two of them ever again. 
ever. Oh, damn! Skyler, you dumb fucking bitch. Oh. It's becoming more and more apparent how horny Skyler is for Ted. Wearing more revealing clothing and knocking over pencil cups like a total oh, dumbass. Walt goes to the store to get more supplies, and he runs into a guy he suspects to be making meth and schools the guy on the ingredients he's getting. He also intimidates the ever-loving shit out of the meth heads. It's pretty incredible seeing Walt going from, Oh man, I don't know if I can do this meth thing, man, to... Stay out of my territory. This is a solid episode. A tier for sure, closer to an S tier than a B tier. Season 2, Episode 11. Mandela. Mandala? Mandala? Eh, screw it. The episode starts off with an unsuspecting kid on a bike and Combo dealing some meth on the side. He thinks he's getting eyeballed by two suspicious looking gentlemen and calls Skinny Pete for backup. Help is on the way until... No! Not Combo! God, I hate children! The suspicious guys and the kid escape, leaving Combo to die on the street. Meanwhile, Walter is given the chance for a special cancer treatment that will make his cancer operable at a steep cost. It's around $200,000, so I don't know if- I'll do it. Jesus Christ, Walter, I wasn't even finished. It's also shown that Skylar is likely to go into labor soon. Hopefully nothing gets in the way of that. Jesse reveals to Walt that Combo is dead, and considering he called him 20 times, he must be very emotionally distraught. Which one is he? Holy fuck, Walter, chill out, let me talk! Jesse rightfully hangs up on him and talks with Skinny Pete, who tells Jesse that he's walking out of the meth game. Things are looking pretty terrible for the Walton Co. meth company, so they ask Saul for advice. Let's start with some tough love, all right? Ready for this? Here goes. You two suck, so give up. Saul tells them about a supposed businessman who seems like the perfect guy for Walt and Jesse to do business with. That's right. Saul knows a guy who knows a guy who knows another guy who knows a guy. The next day, Walt goes to the meeting place of the businessman, Los Pollos Hermanos, a chicken restaurant chain, and ends up spending all day waiting for him to show up. Sadly, no luck. The baby is also given a due date, and Skylar goes back into work for a get-together. Evidently, it's Ted's birthday. Huh. Anybody else hear that? Eh, whatever. Mr. Panicky, Sean. Wait. This... This... This seems so... This seems so familiar. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Oh, my oh no. No, I remember. <laughs> it's it's all coming back to me. Skylar? Yes. I want to hear it first. No, please don't! Skylar! Anything but that, please don't! You don't understand! Happy birthday. No! There are two tragedies in this episode, Combo dying and Skylar singing happy birthday, and frankly, I don't know which one is worse. Walt tries to meet this mystery man again at the restaurant, and after waiting pretty much the entire day, figures out who this man really is. As it turns out, the man was hidden in plain sight the entire time. This man is Gus Fring, and he's the owner of the establishment. I love how for first time viewers, they're as confused as Walt is, but on rewatch, you're like, HE'S ON YOUR LEFT! Fucking look behind you! He's right there! Gus is a complete opposite to Tuco Salamanca. While Tuco was aggressive off the wall and pretty much had an entire office dedicated to his likeness, Gus is calm, decisive, and has a low profile. During his meeting with Walt, he calmly gives Walter a verbal beatdown, telling him all the flaws with his business, such as the fact that Jesse gets high often and how Walt has poor judgment. Walt basically tells him, Fuck that Jesse guy, my meth is pure bitch, and you should sell it. And Gus basically tells him, Alright, I'll call you if I'm interested. Meanwhile, Skylar finds out that Ted is committing tax fraud. <laughs> Oops! Skylar walks out, stating that she doesn't want to get herself into any legal trouble. Jesse is still paranoid as shit, to the point where he misses out on Combo's funeral. But things are about to get better. Or worse, depending on how you look at it. Turns out Jane is a former druggie, and she takes some heroin with Jesse, giving him one of the craziest highs of his life. Walt gets a message back from Gus asking for a meeting. Walt goes to the restaurant and is given specific instructions and a limited amount of time by one of Gus's partners. What follows is one of the most tense and amazing scenes so far in the entire show, with Walt desperately trying to break into Jesse's place to obtain the 38 pounds of meth to show to Gustavo since Jesse can't answer the door due to his insane high. Unfortunately for Walt though, the timing could not have been worse. Now Walt has to choose whether to cancel his meeting with Gustavo and sever ties with him and possibly never be able to sell his meth or not to see the birth of his own child, which would raise huge red flags for Skylar. What does he do? We'll find out next episode. Executive producer Vince Gilligan. Holy shit, this episode is awesome. An incredibly eventful episode, too.
Combo's fucking dead. We finally meet Gus Fring. That ending scene is spectacular, along with the meeting of Gus and Walt being a highlight. This episode is fantastic. S tier without a doubt. Season 2, Episode 12. Phoenix. We continue the episode right where we left off, with Walt in a hurry to the hospital, presumably after completing the deal with Gus. He talks to Marie, saying how he got stuck in traffic, and finds out that the delivery was successful. Ah, Jesus Christ, it scared me! Walt makes it to the hospital and says hello to his new baby girl, Holly, and Ted says hello to Walt. Wait, Ted, what the fuck? Yeah, remember when I said Skylar supposedly quit her job after finding out about the tax fraud? Well, she just kinda... Went right back the next day, and then proceeded to nearly give birth in the office, and got a hospital ride from Ted. Damn, that is some next level cucking shit right here. The only thing that could have made it worse is if Ted delivered the baby himself. Anyway, Skylar asks him to get her overnight back from home, but before he grabs it, he decides to count up the money he made from his big drug deal, showing that the deal went off without a hitch. You know, besides missing his daughter's birth and all. Jesse finds out that he got robbed, quote unquote. Man, it's almost like he told the robber where his meth was or something. Where? Where is it? Where'd you hide the meth? Where is it? Where? <laughs> Damn, Jesse, you're bad at getting robbed. Meanwhile, Jane goes to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting with her father, revealing that she's 18 months clean. Or, I, I should say was, because, you know. They let her talk at a diner, and Jane's dad asks if she's hooking up with Jesse, which she promptly denies. Jesse calls Walt that they got robbed, and a disappointed Walt hangs up the phone. That night, Walt has a Los Pollos Hermanos dinner with the family, and Skylar tells Walt that she'll be going back in the work soon to eyeball Ted. Uh, sorry, I mean to make money for the family. Walt also shows Holly the crazy amount of money he's made thus far from his meth business. Later that night, Holly reports Walt to the DEA, getting Walt arrested and ending his reign over the drug world. Sorry, I should have given a spoiler warning. In all seriousness, Jesse goes to Walt's classroom the next day, and the two of them get into a big argument. Walt tells Jesse that he got 1.2 million from the deal with Gus, and that he's not giving him a penny of it because he got high, because he got high, because he got high. Jesse argues back that it was his day off, and that he swears he's clean from any kind of drug. Walt tells him to prove it by pissing in a cup and testing it, and says something that rubs Jesse a little bit the wrong way. We'll just have to depend on the kindness of strangers to get high. That and your little junky girlfriend. This is one of the first times that I'm actually kind of on Walt's side in one of these arguments. I mean, put yourself in his shoes. Imagine you're about to pull one of the biggest drug deals of your life, and your partner is high as a kite to the point where he's unable to move, and you also miss the birth of your own daughter because of that. I'd be pretty pissed too. That's not to say Walt is really in the right in this argument though. I mean, Jesse was the one that helped them make the meth, so it's not like he shouldn't get at least a little bit of the money. Either way, this argument ends in shambles, figuratively and literally. Walt Jr. sets up a website to start taking in donations to help support his dad, something that puts Walt on edge. The site is called SaveWalterWhite.com, and you can actually still access it to this very day. But anyways, Walt is not a happy camper about the website, seeing it as some sort of pity party, so he calls Saul and rants about it to him, asking what he can do so he can actually spend his meth money. Saul pitches the idea to have a hacker from Belarus donate Walt's money to the website in smaller doses, so that suspicion won't be raised. This is objectively the best idea in the history of ideas, but Walt initially denies it at first, basically saying, Me! I made that money! Way, 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 mine, mine, mine! But he eventually gives in. Jesse complains to Jane that Walt is going insane in the membrane, I'm sorry. You got mad at me for doing heroin. Like, what a loser, dude. I never do that. Anyways, pass me that heroin. Jesse tells Jane that Walt owes him $480,000, which instantly catches Jane off guard. It caught her so off guard, in fact, that it caused her to miss another meeting with her dad. Her dad calls her, and she gets dressed and ready to go, but... Uh-oh. 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 Uh oh. Jane's dad decides he's had enough of waiting and calls the police to turn in Jesse and his own daughter. But Jane convinces her dad that she'll go to rehab first thing tomorrow, and the dad hangs up the phone and leaves. This scene is amazing. Whenever I watch it, I feel like I'm seven years old and my dad just caught me playing Mario Kart DS in the middle of the night. Jane definitely didn't mean shit when she promised to go to rehab. So with her dad coming to drive her to rehab first thing in the morning, Jesse and Jane use this short time frame to devise a plan. Walt and Skylar are comforting Holly when the phone starts a ringing. When Walt picks up the phone, it turns out to be Jane, who essentially blackmails Walter into giving Jesse his end of the deal by threatening to reveal his true identity. He's a high school teacher. What's he gonna do, give you a B minus? Send you outside to cut the erasers? Let you choke on your own vomit? 
Oh, wait, we're not at that part yet. Walt realizes how screwed he is and eventually gives in, collecting the money to return to Jesse. He warns Jesse about Jane, telling him how he's not seeing right, but Jane shuts the door on him. Jane and Jesse both decide to use the money to move to New Zealand and stay clean from heroin forever, but they decide to do one last drug trip before they begin. Walt stops by a bar on his way home and runs into who else but Jane's father. The two of them have a nice conversation about water on Mars, family, and the frustration of having to deal with loved ones doing terrible things, with Jane's dad of course having Jane and Walter having Jesse. The thing is though, Walt describes his situation as if Jesse is a loved one, showing that he truly does still care about Jesse. After this, Walt decides to go to Jesse's apartment to try and patch things up, and discovers that Jesse is on yet another heroin binge. Disappointed, Walt goes inside, discovering both Jesse and Jane are passed out. Well, kind of. This is a hard one to watch. Apparently during the shooting of this scene, Brian Cranston saw the face of his daughter in Jane's face for a brief moment, creating this visceral reaction. It's one of the most important events to happen in the entire show, and a lot of people argue to this day on whether or not Walt should have saved her. On the one hand, obviously he could have easily saved her life, but keeping her alive would mean her and Jesse would leave Albuquerque, and Walty Walt over here didn't want that. Plus, Walt knew that Jane was a bad influence for Jesse, so this created the perfect excuse. But then again, her death would emotionally break Jesse along with her entire family. <laughs> wow, this is scary! This is another easy S tier for sure. Season 2, Episode 13, ABQ. Phew! We finally made it to the last episode of Season 2. The episode starts with the last black and white cold open of the season, with those dudes from Monsters Inc. collecting evidence of the white residents. We get a big pan out shot showing the extent of the damage of this future event. What could it be? Could it be the cartels doing? Could it be another force we don't even know yet? Could it even be Walter White himself? Oh, okay, I'll shut up now. We see Jesse desperately trying to resuscitate Jane, but with no luck. Aaron Paul deserved those Emmys, man. He calls Walt to tell him about the death, and Walt sits down, definitely shocked, surprised, and completely taken aback by what Jesse just told him. Walt calls Saul for help, and he sends over his PI, Mike Airman Shroud, to slap some sense back into Jesse. Apparently, the only reason the writers created Mike was because Bob Odenkirk couldn't come in that day to play Saul. So they were like, hey, let's just make this one-time character. Say he's Saul's PI or something. Surely he won't become one of the most fleshed out and integral characters in the Breaking Bad universe or anything like that. Mike collects evidence from the scene, slaps Jesse, and heads out. Junior's breakfast counter goes up to nine. Flynn! Oh, sorry. Flynn's breakfast counter goes up to nine, which pisses off Walter. The him being called Flynn thing, not the breakfast counter thing. He doesn't technically eat breakfast, but fuck it, I'm counting it. The reason for this is because Save Walter White is doing big numbers, though poor Flynn over here doesn't even realize how filthy that money really is. Jane's dad pulls up to her house to take her to rehab, not realizing that she's fucking dead. He notices an ambulance, goes into the house, and sees the body of Jane inside. Hank gives a meeting to the DEA, and explains why he thinks that the guy they arrested a few episodes ago isn't their main man, and that the real Heisenberg is still out there. What? No! Anyways, Heisenberg, I mean Walter, finds out that Jesse is starting to go a little bit crazy after the whole Jane dying thing, and finds him in a crack house. Jane's dad cancels the rehab and looks around Jane's room, as if it was a shell of what it once was. I know I'm making a lot of jokes here, but this episode is really buttfuck depressing. Like, this is everything bad happens to the main characters, the episode, which will certainly not be the last type of episode we'll be getting in this series. Later, we see Hank meet Gus, who's donating money to support the community. Gus demonstrates here his innate ability to hide in plain sight. I mean, come on, if you didn't know this guy was a ruthless drug lord, would you question him? No, you wouldn't. Who would question such a cute, whimsical smile? Gus finds out that Walt is Hank's brother, which of course will only result in the best of events for Hank's imminent future. Jesse is currently recovering at the hot tub time machine, and Flynn is covered in a story by the news for the success of SaveWalterWhite.com. Walt undergoes surgery, and right before he dozes off, he accidentally lets a big, fat lie slip. Where's your phone? Hmm? Your cell phone, did you bring it? Which one? This has massive consequences for Walt, as Skyler kicks him out of the house due to her not trusting him anymore, and refusing to fall for his lies. Jane's dad goes into work as an air traffic control pilot, but lets his grief get in the way of his job, and... Now listen, I've had days where I've gone into work on days where I wasn't really feeling up to it, or wasn't in the best state of mind. But here's the thing, I'm a movie theater janitor. The most damage I could do is spill someone's leftover beer all over myself. This guy over here spilled much more than beer. The pink teddy bear falls into the pool from the plane in this really cool shot. And that's the season. This episode, while not the best in the series, is a very good close to the season. 
we get new characters, new developments, and the episode does a great job setting everything in the place. Overall, this one's getting an 8 tier. A solid end to a solid season. A lot of people think that Season 2 was the weakest in Breaking Bad, and while it isn't the most exciting or action-packed of the series, I still think it's great. It has some of the best episodes in the entire series, and introduces some of the best characters in the show. Breaking Bad really starts to find its footing in this season, and it's where I think the show starts to get the ball rolling. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in Season 3. Take care.